Boomer. I change your bum life. You fight me, it's a celebration. Yeah, I would beat you when you sign to fight me, it's a celebration. You ring back home, you ring your wife. Baby, we done it. We're rich, baby. Conor McGregor made us rich. Break out the red panties. We're rich, baby. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the fifth round. As always, your boy, Stephen Moustarius. And man, boys, let me tell you what. And girls, if you're watching, but usually the men. Um... UFC 280 was fucking phenomenal over the weekend. Uh, I'm living in Ohio out here, and it's it's something funny, you know, always showing up. Because I usually go to the local B-dubs, you know, to get some drinks, you know, watch the fights and whatnot. And it's always, I'm used to walking out at 1 o'clock in the morning because the fights are usually at 10 p.m. And, man, funky stuff, you know, being over at 2 p.m. And by the time you're walking out of B-dubs, it's 5 o'clock at night, and you're st- or in the afternoon, I should say, and... Still all the sun in the world. So that was that was pretty funny. But, man, UFC 280 delivered phenomenal. Um, I don't even know where to start, but I am going to start off by just apologizing. Bilal Muhammad. Man, I just did a video not too long ago, and I'm sure I'll have it up in the corner here or something. But I had a video not too long ago just absolutely dogging him. And not saying he's a bad fighter. He's an amazing fighter. I'll never once say that he's a bad fighter. I'll never say anybody in the UFC is a bad fighter. Now, if I critique them and say, you know, maybe I don't think they have what it takes to, you know, beat the other high-level fighters, then that's one thing. But trust me, guys, I know I'm very aware that these guys could kick my ass and Bilal Muhammad would have a night with me if he wanted to. So I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you're dogging him. But I am going to apologize because I did a video on him saying he was the most boring fighter in the UFC, which up till now, I mean, is honestly pretty true. Um, I will stand behind that. I know he's got some really impressive wins over Vicente Luque, uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. You know, he had a battle with Jeff Neal or Joff Neal, whichever one you want to say. But still, it's he's had plenty of wins. He's on a crazy win streak. Um, if I mean, if you don't count the Leon Edwards eye poke and the dude... The dude is very phenomenal and very impressive. I will say that, but he has been a rather boring fighter. It doesn't seem like he goes for finishes ever. You know, he likes to he likes to just use that pace, which is fucking phenomenal. It's my favorite thing about some of these fighters is their pace and their stamina and whatnot, and their recovery time is ridiculous. Which Bilal Muhammad is like the beacon of that. So, you know, I never want to sit here and talk talk about his fighting skills, but you know. Saturday night or afternoon, whatever, against Sean Brady, 15-0, and 0, who Sean Brady is. I mean, that Michael Chiesa fight, I know we can name all of his fights. He's very impressive, but, you know, Michael Chiesa being his big first test and Michael Chiesa being huge as he is and Sean Brady doing that to him. And then, you know, I did think Sean Brady was going to probably pull it out against Bilal. I thought Bilal was going to come in, kind of do the same thing. I knew he wasn't looking to take down Sean Brady this time like he does other people, but I knew the pace would be there. I just thought Sean's boxing and just just skill level was a little higher. And boy, was I wrong. Uh, Bilal Muhammad switched teams to go train with Habib, which, boy, was that the greatest choice ever because Bilal looked like a whole different fighter. Bilal finally looking like that fighter at 170 where you're like, man, although he is very good, he's got that pace to push people. He's going to beat 98% of the people in there. I think the only people he really wouldn't beat with the pace is the Kamaru Usman and the Colby Covingtons out there. But you're telling me right now, you're telling me right now, like if you would ask me Saturday, Saturday, even right before, even during the first round of Bilal Muhammad being in there, I would have said, no way, I want to see Bilal Muhammad fight Hamza. I don't want to see him fight anybody in the top five. Like, don't get me wrong, I know he's t- he's just as skilled as these guys, but he's not a killer, and he doesn't look for the finishes enough to beat an Usman, Colby, Hamza, Gilbert Burns. Like, I just didn't think he had it until Saturday. Now, I want to see the Hamza fight. After seeing Hamza kind of gas against uh, Gilbert Burns, even though anybody would have, especially where they were at, they were, I think they're, uh, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that night was the night that they were way high up there in elevation. Yeah, they, I'm pretty sure they were the, the, in Utah or whatever. Yeah, they definitely were. So, um, so I mean, it's, it's understanding, I guess. But uh, still, man, I'm telling you, Bla Muhammad's a problem now that he's got Habib in the corner. Like, Habib was screaming, finish him, finish him, finish him. I mean, in his little, in his accent that he does that I can't do. It, but it was just, man, wow. That's why I'm sitting here. First thing ever I want to say to Bilal Muhammad, if I ever got to meet you, I would apologize to you. You made me a believer. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're a bad fighter. I think you're an amazing fighter. I've always said that, but I just thought you were always looking for, you know, kind of like the old school, old style GSP, like of the, like his older style where, I mean, 
before Michael Bisping. Like his last like five or six fights in the UFC he was like looking just to grind people out, never really looking to finish, and just kind of got you know hungry and just used to you know being the king, and he didn't want to lose that, so he didn't fight as aggressive. And that's what I always thought Blah was. But boy, I'm very fucking impressed. That dude deserves it all. I, I mean, even me, like, you guys got to put yourself in his position. If you're on however big of a fucking win streak he is, I think it's seven or eight or whatever, or he's been unbeaten in his last nine. I think he's won eight in a row. If you count that, the Leon Edwards, I poked the disqualification or the non, the no contest, I should say. Um, I'd be sitting there like, hey, man, why don't I deserve this? You know, like, why don't I at least deserve to fight Gilbert Burns or deserve to fight Hamza or deserve to fight Colby or deserve to fight Leon or Kamar Usman? Like, and I still think, too, even back to Leon fight, I know it got ended early, but Leon was on his way to picking him apart. But Bilal's a whole different fighter now. I think I think with that gas tank and now having the Habib push, and you heard him in that post fight talking about, man, uh, you know, I, I've never worked so hard in my entire life, and I'm, I'm a hard worker. I'm always the hardest working person in the room. But then I go with these Dagestani guys, and, man, hats off to you, dude. Sean Brady, tough L. And I, I saw a couple people bitching about Sean Brady's uh, stoppage being early. Like, dude, I kind of thought the same when I was watching it. But, dude, when you – because I, I like to go back and rewatch them, especially I was at B-Dubs, and they had the Ohio State game on right next to it. And – we had the big high school uh, rivalry game here in the local town, which I fucking hate, but it was playing over B-dubs. We couldn't hear the announcers, which I kind of like for me to kind of not be biased in the fight, but um, I like to go back and rewatch them afterwards, and I got to hear everything and do with Habib yelling and him doing his thing, and boy, I'm telling you, Blah Muhammad's about to be a problem, and he's coming, and he's getting a little older, but he's still like in his prime now and fighting. And he doesn't take much damage usually. I know his head his head movement wasn't there Saturday, which didn't need to be because he was just fucking hawking him down. But that'd be maybe one thing that would change. But I'm not critiquing Bilal Muhammad. He knows what he's doing. He's got Habib. In the, who Habib, I think, went like 12-1 and one or something. Cra- not not literally, but I think he went like 8-1 or 7-1 and one or something Saturday. So, shouts out to the entire team. I'm sorry, Bilal. Uh, if you see me and you want to beat my ass, if you ever watch his video or the old one, I understand. But I'm just letting you know. Great fucking performance. Um, if it wasn't for maybe a couple other performances in the night, you are definitely like maybe the top story, um, other than clearly co main and main event. But Sean O'Malley, you got all these guys, fucking Benil Dariush. It was a phenomenal night of fights, in my opinion. So, Blah Muhammad, super sorry. Don't be mad at me. Um, I used to say I'll never remember the name, but I'll probably, I'll probably remember the name. And, I'm remembering to watch out for sure. So it's been Steven Musteris. The fifth round is always UFC 280. Phenomenal. And let's go, baby. Got me hyped out here.